Okay, so here we are going to solve a problem related to the law of constant composition. The law of constant composition states that for any sample of a compound, the percent, the mass percent of the components of the compound will be the same regardless of what sample you're choosing from. So we're going to use that law of constant composition in order to figure out some things about this sample of magnesium oxide. So in letter A we have if 1.25 grams of magnesium oxide, so that's the amount of the total compound we have, contains 0 0.754 grams of magnesium, what is the mass percent of magnesium to magnesium oxide? So this is very straightforward part to whole. Just like giving yourself a percent on an exam, the amount that you got right divided by the amount total. We're going to do the same thing here. So we have 0 0.754 grams of magnesium. That's one of the components of our compound here. We're going to divide it by the total amount of the compound. We have 1.25 grams of magnesium oxide. And in order to get that as a percent, we multiply it by 100. So the mass percent of magnesium in this compound is equal to 0.754 divided by 1.25 times 100 gives us 60.3 percent. That means any sample of magnesium oxide, no matter where you collect it from, no matter how big it is, will always have 60.3 percent magnesium in it. So we can use that percent in the next one, in letter B, how many grams of magnesium are in 534 grams of magnesium oxide? What I want to really focus on is this number here as a percent. Remember, we can use that as a conversion factor. Anything that has that per in it can be used as a conversion factor. Grams per milliliter, miles per hour, all of that is a conversion factor. This particular conversion factor, it's a percent, so it's a little bit weird. But what it's saying is there's 60.3 grams of magnesium for every 100 grams of the compound magnesium oxide. So all I did was I take, took that percent and it's 60.3 grams of the magnesium in 100 grams of the magnesium oxide. So we can use this conversion factor now for B and for C. So how many grams of magnesium are there in 534 grams of magnesium oxide? That's what we're going to put on the outside and we're going to use our conversion factor to get us to where we need to be. So 534 grams of magnesium oxide. For every 100 grams of magnesium oxide, there's 60.3 grams of magnesium. Double check, make sure everything cancels like it should. Grams of magnesium oxide cancels with grams of magnesium oxide. We're left with grams of magnesium, which is what we're looking for. So this is 534 times 60.3 divided by 100 gives us 322 grams of magnesium. You might notice that this is the same thing as saying 534 times 0 0.603. It's exactly the same, it's just using the percent in a different way. But I wanted to focus on this conversion factor for this letter C. It's not as obvious what we would multiply by, how we could use a percent in letter C. If you have 36.9 grams of magnesium, now we're just talking about the part, not the whole. But if you had 36.9 grams of magnesium, how many grams of magnesium oxide could you obtain? We're going to use the conversion factor in order to figure out what we're going to be doing here. So we start on the outside with 36.9 grams of magnesium. And now using the conversion factor, we can say that for every 60.3 grams of magnesium, we can get out 100 grams of the magnesium oxide. Double check, make sure everything cancels as it should. Grams of magnesium on the bottom cancels with grams of magnesium on the top. 36.9 times 100 divided by 60.3 
gives you 61.2 grams of magnesium oxide. So this is a quick review of the law of multiple uh, I'm sorry, the law of constant composition. And more importantly, it's a review of how to use a percent as a conversion factor. We're going to be doing that frequently during the course of the semester.